This is a very high yield topic for step one, and it also has very high yield applications for step two as well. So neurology can be pretty complex, but if you master this concept, you'll be able to get some easy points on your exam. So we will be discussing mnemonics and doing a quiz at the end of this video to solidify all the facts. So the brain sends signals down the spinal cord, which is then sends signals that eventually gets to the anterior horn and then to the muscles. So that's a very oversimplified way of saying this, but bear with me. So from the brain to just before the anterior horn is called the upper motor neuron. From the anterior horn to the muscle is called the lower motor neuron. Before we get into the mnemonics for this topic, let's look at a broad overview of the symptoms or clinical features of upper motor neuron lesions and lower motor neuron lesions. So upper motor neuron lesions cause hypertonic muscle. They also cause hyperreflexic reflexes and spastic muscles, as well as disuse atrophy and a positive Babinski sign. However, lower motor neuron lesions have hypotonic muscle, hyporeflexic reflexes, flaccid paralysis, denervation atrophy, and a negative Babinski's reflex. So let's take a closer look at why disuse atrophy occurs in upper motor neuron lesions. So, disuse atrophy occurs because of the lesion in the upper motor neuron. These patients might not be able to send signals to the muscle to move and function as it previously did. So the muscle is not in use and therefore this results in disuse atrophy. Of course, upper motor neuron lesions can cause muscles to be spastic initially. So despite these frequent contractions, they still cannot use their muscles like they used to. So disuse atrophy results, but it occurs a bit later. So it's not like an acute finding, it takes a bit of time to develop and to be clinically evident. Also, I mentioned the Babinski's reflex before. So this reflex occurs when the sole of the foot has been firmly stroked by an object. The big toe then goes upwards and towards the surface of the foot and the other toes fan out. It's very high yield to note that this reflex is normal in children up to two years old. But after that age, seeing the toes up in the Babinski's reflex can be indicative of an upper motor neuron lesion. However, in a lower motor neuron lesion, when the sole of the foot is firmly stroked, the toes go down, and that is a normal or negative reflex. And here comes the mnemonics. So for upper motor neurons, you just need to remember the up arrow. And that up arrow means more. And for lower motor neuron lesions, remember the down arrow or the lower arrow, and that means less. And this is all you need to remember to master upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron questions on your exam. So now you know that upper motor neuron lesions occur above the anterior horn and it involves the brain and spinal cord. So like I said before, for upper motor neuron, just remember up or more. So hypertonic means more muscle, hyperreflexic, more muscle reflexes, spastic, more muscle contraction, disuse atrophy, more muscle disuse. And like previously mentioned, a positive Babinski sign is when the toes go up. So upper motor neuron lesions, more, 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 more tone, more reflexes, more contraction, more disuse, toes go up. Now let's move on to the lower motor neuron lesions. And this is the opposite. So hypotonic, less muscle tone, 
hyporeflexic, less muscle reflexes, flaccid, less muscle contraction, denervation atrophy, less muscle innervation, negative Babinski sign, toes go down, toes go down. So for lower motor neuron lesions, it's all less. Less tone, less reflexes, less contraction, less innervation, and the toes go down. Another high yield thing to note for lower motor neuron lesions is that you can see muscle fasciculations. So fasciculations are brief spontaneous contractions that affects a number of muscle fibers. Because in lower motor neuron lesions, they aren't receiving any stimulations from the upper motor neurons, what happens is that the muscles have these ectopic fasciculations. So basically, the motor system is trying to generate movement on its own. So that results in these small fasciculations. This is very high yield to know. Because let's say we see a seven month old and they have tongue fasciculations. It's very important to have spinal muscular atrophy as your differential for this finding. Spinal muscle atrophy is an autosomal recessive lower motor neuron disease. It occurs due to a mutation on chromosome five. These patients can also present with other signs of lower motor neuron lesions such as muscle weakness and decreased or low tone. Another high yield fact to note is that some viruses can affect the anterior horns. For example, the West Nile virus and the polio virus can affect the anterior horn cells resulting in these patients having lower motor neuron lesion signs. Now let's move on to doing some questions. So question one, a 65 year old man presents with difficulty swallowing for two months. Physical exam shows decreased muscle strength and tone. Four plus reflexes in his lower extremities. However, sensation to light touch, pinprick, and vibration is intact. What is the best next step? A. Muscle biopsy B. MRI of brain and spine or C. EMG So this patient has upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron signs. So the decreased muscle strength and tone is indicative of the lower motor neuron signs. However, the four plus reflexes is indicative of upper motor neuron signs. Another important thing to note is that sensation is preserved in this patient. So more than likely the diagnosis of this is ALS. And of these options, the best way to diagnose this is an MRI of the brain and spine. So the answer is option B. So in ALS, these patients have both upper and lower motor neuron findings. However, sensation, bladder and ball function, and extraocular function are spared. MRI of the brain and spine is a test of choice to confirm this diagnosis. It can show multiple sclerotic plaques, most commonly seen in the periventricular area with finger-like extensions. There is no definitive treatment or cure for ALS. However, Rilizol is a NMDA receptor antagonist that improves survival of these patients. Now let's go on to question two. A 51-year-old woman with a history of multiple sclerosis presents with urinary incontinence. Three weeks ago, she started to experience an uncontrollable urge to urinate and increased urinary frequency. Exam reveals a positive Babinski sign and hyperreflexic lower extremities. What would most likely be found in this patient? A. 120 milliliters of residual urine B. Delayed bladder emptying 
or C, bladder hypertonia. So if a patient has multiple sclerosis and they develop an acute spinal cord lesion, they can experience urinary symptoms. This patient has exam findings of a positive Babinski sign and hyperreflexive lower extremities. So this patient more likely has an upper motor neuron lesion and the overactivity of her bladder is an indication of an acute spinal cord lesion as well. So the answer is C, bladder hypertonia. Options A and B would likely occur in a flaccid or hypotonic bladder. So a flaccid bladder occurs in lower motor neuron lesions. For example, if a patient had cauda equina syndrome, and that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. To continue learning, press this video right here. And as always, thank you for watching.